We're just going to look at mitigation and adaptation strategies. And you can see in the middle here, some of these things actually do cross over, especially looking at forests, right? So if I talk about mitigation, I'm really talking about reducing the emissions. If I talk about adaptation, I'm talking about what I can do really to reduce the impact. So if I talk about sea level rising, more coastal erosion, more flooding and storm surges, then I can build things like uh, levees or seawalls, depending on my location. Over here, the obvious ones are more sustainable transport, clean energy, and being more energy efficient. All right, so energy efficiency is a key thing. So carpooling would help, public transport would help, because both of those would remove the need for the amount of energy would have had in the past. Okay, so what I want to do is make sure that I get more output relative to my input. So energy efficiency appliances are also great here. In the home, low energy light bulbs. Again, you can see solar panels, so renewable energy. Insulation is very important. So if my home is very well insulated, I use things like double or triple glazed windows that can keep the heat in if I am heating the particular home I'm living in. Obviously, we want to shift into more clean energy sources. So renewable energy, all of the solar, wind, HEP, etc. Electronic vehicles that are charged by solar power as well. Geoengineering can really help. So this is a large scale deliberate attempt to manipulate what is going on. So I could put mirrors up. I could reflect the incoming solar radiation, right, in theory. This means that the Earth's surface isn't as warm. Similar here, shoot aerosol particles up into the stratosphere. Again, I would reflect more incoming solar radiation as well. All right, so afforestation on a large, large scale. So planting vast amounts of forests would absorb CO2. So removing it from the atmosphere as, as well. Another strategy to reduce some of the effects, I might want to increase so have a higher albedo level, so that would modify the level of reflectivity. So my roads could be much lighter, not using fresh, dark asphalt. So I could use a lighter form of concrete, white buildings, green rooftops, etc. Right, nutrients in the ocean, so ocean fertilization, which would encourage the growth of CO2 eating plankton. Okay, so another thing I could do is carbon capture and store in rocks so at the source so if i had a factory i could actually catch as it was emitting here and then i could pump it into the underground rocks here but that depends on the type of geology uh, some people are very concerned about this especially those that live in an area so things like links if i was living in an area where i had frequent earthquakes it might not be uh, appropriate. So another thing that a, a local government or a government can do is introduce a tax. All right. So we've seen a number of high income countries do this here. So usually about $25 per metric ton. Some of these are quite high. So usually you get a period of time. So two or three years notice. And then over a period of time, this per ton may increase. So you've got time as a business or an individual to actually switch to something that is more renewable or if it's going to cost you a lot of money and that's not an option then reducing the amount of co2 okay so we can look at creating a market all right so this is essentially what carbon trading is so you can see here that the government sets a cap so the government knows exactly each year what it is that we allow industry or businesses to emit all right so over a period of time this should lower okay so we would issue permits or you could go to auction for some of these permits here Right. If you don't use them, then you could sell them. Right. So that would generate re revenue for you and your business. If you do need more, then you could purchase more. All right. But one negative of this is the government setting that, and it can be argued that these targets have been too generous in the past. The other thing is carbon offsetting. We can see that this is something that the aviation industry in particular does. You might see this when you purchase a ticket. It doesn't stop us from emitting. What it does is it gets us to invest in projects that would absorb and offset what we do emit here. Okay, so this is deemed really to not stop your behavior. 